Relax, Harold. Nobody's getting anybody killed. Cyrus is perfectly safe with me. If the machine sent us his number, it may mean that you are placing Mr. Wells at risk. Or it could mean I'm here to protect him. Honestly, Harold, keeping up with everything the machine whispers in my ear can be tricky, especially now that I'm down to one. Oh, my. Oh, did you not hear about my chat with Control? She's fun. In an unnecessary stapedectomy kind of way. But I do miss music in stereo. I'm sorry. The machine offered me a job. She never said it would be easy. And what job is that, exactly? Trying to save the world, of course. By preventing the emergence of a second machine. Samaritan. Genetically programmed, fully targetable, and nearly complete. Samaritan presents a serious threat to our machine, Harold. And Decim is trying to bring it to life. Do you really want to see what it looks like when two gods go to war? Maybe you should be more worried about what happens when Samaritan comes online than about what happens to some janitor. How much do you know about this janitor, Ms. Groves? Well, he's got some interesting ideas about metaphysical determinism, and I think he's a Doris Day fan. Do you know that he has an MBA in finance from Fordham? Do you know he was a multimillionaire by the age of 35? Do you know he hasn't worked on Wall Street since 2009? Would you even care to know why? Perhaps you should ask the machine for a bit more information about Cyrus Wells before you deem him insignificant. He'll be fine. I promise. I know it seems weird, but I'm one of the good guys now, Harold. <laughs> Third from the bottom, 15th on the right, behind you. Root wouldn't take go for an answer. No, I'm afraid not. It seems that she thinks she has a situation well in hand. <laughs> Ms. Groves has never been particularly concerned about collateral damage, which may be precisely what Cyrus Wells is about to become. Watch over them until we can figure out what's going on. In the meantime, I'll try to determine what message this is meant to convey. Seems pretty clear to me, Finch. I think she likes you, Harold. So, I don't want to be rude or anything, but... Yeah, look, thank you for the hot cocoa, and I, it was nice of you to walk me home, but whatever it is you're doing right now is... is Necessary. Not... Trust me. you skipped breakfast. And you and your Australopithecine co-worker can just take the day off. I've been doing just fine without a safety net. Look, the only reason you're not stuck in a cage right now is me. Don't make me look bad. I couldn't make you look bad if I tried. You should start packing your toiletries. Whoa, 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 no, 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 okay? Seriously, no. I have to work again tonight. I need to sleep, so it's time for you to leave. Actually, it's time for us both to leave. Things are about to get interesting. What? Why? Is this about what happened? Am my old job? What did happen? My new business. Give me that. Who are these people, Cyrus? Their, their names. It, it could be important. It's not. You have to go. Did they get hurt? Did you get hurt? I, I need to know what happened. Finch, I've got eyes on a sniper. And I might have a lead on who's doing the shooting. <laughs> 